Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here. One subject that has proved popular on here in the past is the history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Thus far, I have uploaded individual videos looking at every well-known console and arcade game from the classic era. However, if we want to fully grasp the history of games produced using the Turtles brand, we still have tons of titles to get through in the future as new entries in the series would be continued to be churned out way past the IP's peak. Before I release videos looking at many of the overlooked official games from this franchise, let's take a little detour and look at a game that very, very few people even know exists. In order to do so, I am going to hand you over to this channel's resident bootleg specialist, Steaker. China really is the gift that keeps on giving to the world. So with that said, let's go on another journey exploring the existence of yet another ludicrous Chinese creation. Screw international copyright laws and trading standards. Let's give all our money to the creative people of the CCP. Yeah. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk, have at you! I think we can all agree that video games based on movies and TV shows don't have the best of reputations, often being regarded as quick cash grabs with little to no effort in putting out a quality product. But the 16-bit era was something of an exception to this rule. I mean, sure, there were a lot of terrible games based on movies, TV shows and cartoons. But there were also some really good ones out there. I mean, just look at games like Aladdin, The Lion King, Alien 3, True Lies, Batman, Batman Returns, Jurassic Park and X-Men. These were all good games, some of which do not get talked about enough. Regardless, there was one series which was arguably just as popular on the television as it was in video games. And that was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. Whether you grew up with the arcade or the awesome Mega Drive spin-off, you'll be hard-pressed to find someone who played this back in the day and did not instantly fall in love with the games. In fact, Konami's run with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a really good one. Yes, even the original NES game was good. I feel that one gets too much undeserved hate. But I do feel public perception is starting to change on that one. As the Game Boy Advance rolled around, Konami would keep making Turtles games. But they would not have anywhere near the same impact as before. It's almost as if Konami lost the spark for 2D games. And before anyone comments, yes, I know the GBA is a 32-bit machine. But what I mean is, look at the games. You'd sooner associate them with 16-bit titles than you would 32-bit ones. But I digress. My point is that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were an instance where both the TV show and the games were highly popular and of a great quality. Which also meant it was fair game for bootleggers. The thing is, Turtles bootlegs for the most part were just the official game on a bootleg cartridge. That is, with one exception. This game is so rare, it doesn't even have any videos on YouTube. Yes, this is a bootleg Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the Game Boy Advance that is so rare, you'll be hard pressed to find any information on it. Like I said, there aren't even any gameplay videos about it on YouTube. I searched high and low, but all I could find was the official game, not this bootleg. Part of the reason for that is because the ROM was only dumped in May of 2020. But we do know that this is in fact a real release, as there are a few pictures of the bootleg cartridge this came on. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 by the Chinese bootleggers Syntax. Oh dear. Oh dear god. Oh god no! Well, I guess I'll need this again, won't I? Yes, as you can clearly tell, this game is awful. But let's start at the beginning. You play as Leonardo, and only Leonardo. For some reason, all other turtles are missing. But man, why Leonardo of all turtles? He's literally the least interesting character of all four if you ask me. Where's my man Raphael? His sprite also seems to have been ripped from Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. Except he's missing a ton of animations. As for your moves, you can walk, jump, use your sword, which also fires energy beams for some reason, and sprint. The sprint move is kinda weird though. You need to hold the R button to sprint. But here's the thing, it doesn't actually do anything. Sure, your running animation changes, but you're not actually moving faster, and jumping does not take into account your momentum, so there's no point in getting a running start for any jump. Oh, also, have I mentioned the controls are also inverted? Instead of the usual A to jump and B to attack, the controls are the exact opposite. Thankfully, I am playing this on an emulator, so I can just switch the control inputs. <sighs> well, we're not off to a good start. But don't worry, it gets worse. Most of the enemies you'll be facing aren't even from the Turtles cannon. I mean, the heck is this? And who are these guys? What is that? These enemies don't even look like they belong in the Turtles universe. I did at least run into Mausers and Unibots from the TV show and the SNES game. But if you were hoping to find any foot soldiers, then I've got bad news for you. There aren't any. The hit detection is also all over the place, with me often firing at the enemies and my shot just going through them and leaving them completely unharmed. At first, I just tried to avoid them, but then I discovered completely by accident that you can simply jump on them and it will kill them. How was I supposed to know that? It's not like any official Turtles game has this jumping mechanic, and the jump doesn't even seem the type that would kill enemies, so how was I supposed to guess this? There's also this interesting bug where if you attack while jumping, your character just stands there in the air without falling. Anyway, this game has a lot of verticality to it. In fact, most levels, rather than going from left to right, you're expected to climb up. And the first stage is by far the worst one with this mechanic. There's a ton of vertical platforming here, a lot of which feels damn near impossible to achieve. Like here, I could not make this jump work at all. And then I discovered that if you press up as you jump, you do a high jump, something which I wish the game told you about. To make matters worse, you can expect a lot of blind jumps and leaps of faith in this game. You have no idea where you're supposed to go, so you simply jump at the edge of the platform and hope for the best. Even the level design can be misleading, as I'd often find these gems which seem to be pointing down. But when I jump there, I'm literally sent back to previous platforms, forcing me to redo entire sections all over again. But the worst part was by far this jump. I could not for the life of me get this jump to work. I tried it over and over and over again. And bear in mind, this is near the end of the first level. Meaning that if you miss a jump, ah uh, no 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 why? <sighs> yes, if you miss a jump, you have to restart the entire level from the beginning. No matter how much I tried, I could not make this jump work. And that's when it hit me. 
What if I jump and keep hitting the attack button and wait for the other platform to come near me again? And that's when I finally understood. This isn't a bug. It's a feature! Yes, you're expected to do this. You're expected to clear entire platforming segments by hitting the attack button over and over again. And then shimmy your way to where you need to go. I don't think you get how bad this is. It took me one hour to complete this game. Half of which was spent entirely on this level. Also, you gotta love the level names here, like Pull Away From The Sea, Armor Passage, and Aerial Defense Fort. I mean, jeez, why not just call this one Technodrome or something? At least it would've felt like I was playing an actual Turtles game. Anyway, level 2 is much different, because this one is just your typical left to right affair. But it's also a much easier stage than the first one. Because now I was aware I could simply walk on air to reach my destination. And that's exactly what I did. I skipped entire level portions just by attacking and walking on air. Most of the time I couldn't even see where I was going. But if I ever was in danger, I'd just look for a platform and shimmy my way over there. And I did not apply this trick to just level 2 either. It literally works on every other level in the game except the first one. Yes! Ironically, the one stage where you can't skip over segments by doing this is the first one. Because each platform section is set up in a way where you always need to climb upwards. But the rest of the game was a breeze. So, yes, the first level is also the hardest. There were some levels where I wasn't sure of where to go, because the stage design made it seem like you could go left or upwards. But as it turns out, the correct answer is almost always upwards and left or upwards and right. You might also have noticed you keep hearing the same song in the background. And that's because this game only has three songs. The intro theme and two stage themes. The weird part is how you keep hearing this song in every level. Which is like a 20 second song on a constant loop. And trust me, by the end of it, I was so tired of listening to it. But on some levels, you also get this song. What I mean is, you're progressing nicely through the level, and then suddenly the music changes. Now, you might think that this is a boss team or something. But no, the music just changes for no reason. There's nothing that justifies the theme change. I should also point out that due to the poor hit detection and difficult jumps, it wasn't uncommon for me to die. And each time you do, you start at the beginning of the stage. Yes, that's right, there are no checkpoints. And let me tell you, some of these levels can be super long. But my biggest issue were these spinning spiked balls. They were immune to my attacks, so I tried to avoid them. Then I discovered that I can simply jump over them, like a regular enemy. How the heck was I supposed to know that? I'm sorry, but have you seen how they look? Do they look like the type of enemy that you can simply jump on? Anyway, this game also has boss fights, the first of which is Baxter Stockman. The weird part is, when I'm fighting him, he just suddenly disappeared. I could not find him anywhere on the level, and then the game just brings me to the next stage. I honestly have no idea if I beat him without me noticing it, or if it was a bug. But at this point, I'd rather not take my chances. So I charged on ahead. The second boss is Metalhead, whose sprite also seems to have been ripped from the Super Nintendo game. Just like Baxter Stockman, he is a complete pushover. And when I beat him, wait, 
That's it? That's the game? You don't even get to fight Shredder! Or Crank, Bebop, or Rocksteady! <sighs> Man, this game is pretty rough. But like, I don't even need to tell you that. You can see that from just watching a few seconds of gameplay. The thing is, I try to not be negative in my videos. But this game is by far the worst game I've ever played. <sighs> but do you know what the worst part is? Are you ready for the absolute worst part? There are at least three sequels. There are several bootleg games from other franchises that use this exact engine and music. There's a Sonic game, a Rayman game, and even a Crash Bandicoot game. Now, I don't know the order of release for these titles, but I will say the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game feels like it's the roughest out of these. But I do know that this game wasn't the first title to use this engine. As far as I know, the first game to use this engine was Mario DX, which manages to be even buggier than this one. With terrible hit detection and the music would just stop working at random. Man, I cannot take any more of this. I know these are bootleg games that were developed without any access to official development kits. But there are decent and even good bootlegs out there. But this? This is beyond awful. So my advice is to just stay away from this game and replay Turtles in Time or Hyperstone Heist. You'll thank me later. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was a look at the ludicrous Chinese Turtles bootleg, presented by Steaker. If you are yet to do so, I strongly urge you to subscribe and check his channel out for all sorts of cool videos covering gaming oddities. Why not head over to his channel and look at one of his latest videos, covering a brand new Sega Mega Drive game. Yeah! Cheerio!